Welcome to the Creative Tools podcast. My name is Ashay and I'm immensely passionate about using technology for creativity. On this podcast, I talk to various creators about what tools and technology they use to be creative. My guest today is Moonji Pickering. Moonji is a colored pencil artist. Her works have been exhibited in well-known museums in California such as the D Young Museum and Huntington Art Museum. She publishes a calendar at the end of every year so people can enjoy her work year round. From flowers to animals to nature and everything in between, her paintings are relatable, warm and cheerful. Got it. Hey Munji, thanks a lot for visiting my podcast. Oh, thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so let's dive right in my first question is what do you create so uh what do i create um i paint on paper with color pencil uh i use some other mediums but um you know mainly right now i work with color pencil uh my art i will say is very colorful I use a lot of vibrant, cheerful colors. Um, subjects are uh, familiar, common elements such as like animals or um, landscape, landmarks, uh, something that's uh, very instantly recognizable. Um, and then I'll say my feature, my art feature is. Um, it has very clean edges. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw <laughs> and, that. <laughs> yeah. And um, I like to simplify uh, scene or objects. So simple shapes um, with uh, lots of cheerful color. <laughs> Great. So has your art always been uh, something that you can hold in your hands? Or uh, had, has it ever been digital? Oh, so earlier days, yes, I worked um, digital uh, art, which was uh, be- because I um, have a degree in architecture design. I did more digital work back then than right now. So I'll say, yeah, I have some digital art, but um, my my passion was more into like have physical you know pencil and then scrub on paper or <laughs> hmm. you know hmm. paint on the paper okay um so what i want to do is i want to uh, talk about three uh, talk talk in like three different sections uh, mm-hmm. for this interview uh, mm-hmm. the first section is the pre creation part so before mm-hmm. you start uh, creating what happens then mm-hmm. the creation the actual creation and the post uh, creation part so mm-hmm. let's talk about the pre creation and what i mm-hmm. uh, specifically want to understand is how do you receive the inspiration uh, for mm-hmm. your creations how do you record that mm-hmm. inspiration and how do you retrieve it when you want to create mm. so um when when i get strong inspiration you know my mind for myself thinking like i'll i'll remember this forever you know i'll have this image in my head but that never happens you yeah. know brain always fill up with some other stuff and you just forget and then like oh how 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 it was so strong you know yeah so i um take a lot of photos just just whenever i see something interesting i take a photo right away or i do a lot of screenshots from movie or tv shows Mm. i whenever i see like um very unique color uh, combination Mm. that i want to use it in the future sometime then i make a screenshot always and also um one other like platform that i that i use a lot is pinterest Hmm. because you know i get so frustrated when i have this image that i saw from google or somewhere but i cannot find it 
again, then I get like, oh, where did I see it? Yeah. You know? So I make sure to pin it in my Pinterest so that I can um, refine it and, and use it as a reference in the future. Um, that's like three. Oh, and lastly, very basic one is paper and pencil, which um, sometimes we play replaced by iPad and Apple pencil. <laughs> I just have a little thumbnail uh, with a composition or just an image that I want to come back to so that um, I can I can always retrieve inspiration or like uh, visit again. So uh, the the Pinterest part you mentioned, so whatever you see interesting on Pinterest, do you pin it to your board and is that it? Or you also, the photos that you take, you upload that to Pinterest and then uh, pin them? Oh, uh, sometimes, well, I don't usually upload my, uh, the photo that I took. Okay. I do more like, yeah, I browse Pinterest and then pin it from there or I browse some other um, what are search search yeah. engines and then pin it from there. Oh, okay. And then you also take screenshots you mentioned, uh, yes. which is in your screenshots folder. And then, yeah. uh, and then the thumbnail sketching is that uh, you mentioned iPad and Apple Pencil. So do you use uh, mainly that like a digital thumbnail or you also have like a physical pen and paper like sketchbook with you? Oh, I use more sketchbook pencil. Um, that's more... Um, familiar with to yeah. me yeah. I'm getting used to the iPad and Apple Pencil <laughs> but then that basically means that you are storing your inspirations probably in three four different places uh, right. Pinterest uh, screenshots uh, iPad and your physical sketchbook so yeah. uh, how do you make sure you go back uh, to the inspiration <laughs> when, you, when you're creating that's that's a that's a good um question because um you know it can be everywhere but 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 i i make sure to have it always in one place like a full folder or you know the photo has um you like the photo or some yeah. some specific folder you can create yeah. for just that just that yeah. And even Pinterest have my ins inspiring folder, mm. <laughs> which is private folder that only I can see. Mm. So I usually go from time to time and then just look at it. Oh, uh, okay. So it's like a digitized scrapbook or sketchbook that I just go back and look at it and then re- get re-inspiration so i was talking to a, a a person few days ago and then he mentioned mm -hmm. that like every single night before he goes back to bed instead of scrolling social media he just scrolls through his inspirations <laughs> so that's so, so true yeah so do you also schedule like uh, scrolling through your inspirations uh i do uh, yeah so that's the that's the that's another very you know unique thing that these days you can go into Instagram or social media and you can see all this fantastic art, like yeah. creative artists, artwork right there, fingertip. And sometimes I do screenshot that too yeah. <laughs> when it gives me inspiration. So yeah, I, I do tend to like just scroll, 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 looking at all the images. Okay. Has it ever happened with you that uh, you lost the inspiration? Like you, you, you were creating mm. something and then you kind of felt, oh, I kind of remember something similar that I have recorded like two years ago. And then you just could not find it. In... Oh, um, probably. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably I'm not remembering it <laughs> or sometimes I do write down words. Okay. But like this words was I I want to for instance like fireworks, let's say. Mm. I want to create fireworks on my art uh, as an art form. Uh but then when I go back and then see fireworks and like 
what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> what was that? No, I better write down more details. Yeah. Or, you know. Uh, another thing, another funny instance. So I was talking to another person and he mentioned that like he... When he gets an inspiration, uh, he sketches the thumbnail and then he writes down everything that was surrounding mm. him at that moment, even like oh. what he was smelling. Like, so, wow. <laughs> so, and that, that kind of helps him remember uh, things. Yes. Like that. So it's, I, I agree. I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then when you mentioned you write words, uh, is that, is that in your notes app or uh, somewhere else? Sketchbook. Like where, my sketchbook. Oh, sketchbook. Okay. Yes. Okay. So basically, if you create like a physical thumbnail with your uh, hand, then you would probably write like a, a, a keyword or a tag or yes. something like that next to it. Okay. Yeah. Oh Definitely. Um, so the next question is then the creation aspect of it. So mm -hmm. I will tell mm -hmm. you my experience. Uh, mm -hmm. I make films. So I, I'll tell you my experience on how I experience creation. Mm. And you tell me if you... Uh, experience something similar or it is uh, completely different so when i make films uh, i storyboard the film right mm -hmm. and when i storyboard the film even though it's in a very crude form mm -hmm. the actual film is getting built in my head like while i'm right. storyboarding it right uh, and then when i uh, capture the audio and video data and then now i'm editing it mm -hmm. it's a question of it's an activity of uncovering the creation that i'm already seeing in my head so, right, right. Uh, so, so the first part is basically making decisions with storyboarding, mm -hmm. like making, and then the next part is making a choice. It's so like mm -hmm. you just you just remove that uh, so, uh, things that are unnecessary, so that you can basically just uncover the mm -hmm. the creation that you are you already built in your head in mm -hmm. front of. You. So, mm -hmm. do you feel uh, something similar, or is your process? Uh, I, I think I feel totally uh, similar to you. I will have some image in my head that I want to put it on yeah. the paper. Um, and your storyboard will be my sketching yeah. with the pencil on the paper. Right. Then I'll have some color in my mind. So I will, you know, pick the colors and then put it all on it to actually match the image in my head on the paper. It, so it's very similar. But then how okay. do you make sure that you're putting in the right color? Like for example, what happens with me also is I don't necessarily know what I want. Mm. I know what I don't want. So, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so uh, I, uh, so with digital film editing, I can make like versions of different scenes and then I can choose That's like true. which ones, yes. uh, which ones work. But right. if you are actually putting the color on paper, then if you don't like it, mm -hmm. uh, then, then what do you do? Like, do you create oh, another? Yeah. Right. So, so when you think of color pencil, um, uh, you know, it, it feels like it's very forgiving medium. Like you, you erase it, then you're okay. But no, when you erase it, the pigment still, yeah, you know, left on the paper. And then if you add on other color, it can change the, right. you know, shade or yeah, hue. So um, these days I use iPad, <laughs> an app called Pro Procreate. Okay. With so, so the process is that I take a picture with my iPad Correct. and then import the photo into the Procreate app. Then I fill in some color that I had in my mind and then see if that colors, you know, go with each other. Yeah. Go well with each other. Then and I will have uh, different layers to test if this other, you know, yeah. color will be better or is this better, you know, and then, and then let my eye decide. Then I will put actual color on the paper. So, so you sketch first uh, on mm -hmm. paper and then before putting in any color, you basically use the digital technology to make a choice for mm -hmm. which works best and then you uh, come back to 
uh, mm-hmm. the physical sketch. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. It's it's uh, so one thing that I always uh, say this that uh, digital technology has given a tremendous power of making a choice to creators oh, rather rather than a decision. True. So right. earlier when everything was analog, if you put like a stroke of paint on the canvas, uh, if you want to see a different version or dif- something different for it you had to use another canvas yes. but with but with digital you can put like a digital stroke you can copy it change its form change its color and then now you right. have a choice you don't have right. you don't have, you have to have, you don't have to make a decision you can make a choice between the two and, yes and and that is so um, i think freeing uh, it is liberating for creators uh, it's very That's so true because you don't have to worry about creating the same thing again on a right. paper and then uh, hopefully it's same yes. <laughs> you know, right. even if i'm doing it i cannot really do the exact same thing you yeah. know but what about the sketch part though like for sketch you still have to do it on paper so do you uh, do you do like three four different sketches before you choose uh, oh. the one that so- so for the sketch, I I get help with Procreate also because okay. um, I'll so I'll sketch with pencil, which I can erase easily, mm. and then there's um, um between sketch and color, there's uh, the middle part which is I'll call I call a uh, permanent sketch, mm. which I do with the color pencil. Hmm. then I cannot really edit it yeah, because it will leave the mark. Right. So in between, uh, uh, before I go to permanent sketch with the pencil work, um, same thing, take a picture and um, import to the Procreate. And then I'll uh, put the um, color on the negative space, which is the background that, that surrounds the subject. Hmm. And then see from far whether I like it or not. Hmm. And then, and you know, edit from there. Because sometimes I don't see that, um, you know, these parts are crowded. The composition is not really what I want. Um, Some parts have lots of object and one part was you know what was i thinking you know so that kind of my own mistake i can find it from you know procreate before i actually make it the permanent decision so it for, the, me for the sketch itself you're saying for the sketch right? yeah okay and it's yeah. it, it is still an erasable sketch at that point yes. so you can erase it you can sketch something else you can again take a picture see yes. uh okay and then you come to a decision of sketch oh that's really great um okay so yeah. this is this is the creation part now let's talk about the uh, post creation aspect um where now you Hold have on. i cannot hear you um the internet is very unstable it says strange can you uh, hear me well yes oh you're back okay okay <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let, I was saying, let's talk about the post creation part, mm-hmm. um, where now you have done your creation, you have made your creation. Um, how do you release? How do you distribute? And how do you market your creations? Mm-hmm. I would say I use um, a lot of technology at this part. Um, you know, artists have to wear a lot of hats. <laughs> Um, and my favorite part is making art, <laughs> but there's so many other, I know. other <laughs> parts that I'm feeling. Um, so first thing and most important part will be um, digitizing my art. Hmm. And I tried myself many times, but now I get help from expert i don't do it myself <laughs> because <laughs> if art is small enough that fits in the scanner then it's very easy you just yeah. put it in scan it but if it doesn't fit you have to take a picture of it 
but um, small light changing or shadow yeah. angle or even the photo filter, the automatic filter, it changed the color of art right. very, you know, differently. So my expert, <laughs> he will do the scan. It's all the correct, you know, I don't know, tools. And also after that, critical part will be color correction. Hmm. You will print it out and see if it matches the original art mm. because, um, you know, the monitor is RGB color yeah. and then printer is CMYK. So it can, the, the, the bright looking red can print out dull, yeah. you know, dark red. So he will use, I think he used Photoshop to to correct those colors so that the printed outcome is actually matching the original art. Um, so that part I get help with um, the expert um, and digitize it. And when I get that um, image, then I will uh, use that image to create calendar, greeting cards. Um, prints and also up, updating on the, on my website that new art is coming right so so this for, print yeah. this print part you mentioned uh, is that for uh, like these uh, the, the calendar and uh, frames is that why you have to print uh, your digital uh, art? print print art prints are i'll say um because uh well origin original art has the most value but um the uh replica copy of the original art so called print have also you know you know also value that that some somebody wants to have that art uh on mm -hmm. their wall but not necessarily original art then they can buy a print and, and is it is it also to uh, kind of reduce the size of the original art? Because I, I was at the art festival yesterday and then that person mentioned that I usually like paint like the entire wall. But then <laughs> but then I take a picture and then I create an art print, which is just like, OK, uh, two, two yeah. feet by four feet. Right. And right. now that is something that uh, I can sell and people mm -hmm. can uh, buy it to hang on their wall so mm. uh are prints made to also uh, have it in like some different forms and different sizes is that why mm. you have to print? so i think it depends on artists it's all their choice it all comes down to their choice my choice was i want to have exact same um size with the, as a original art okay so i only do the same same um size print and i only do the limited number also i want to just print 50 of them it'll be only yeah 50 prints will be existing in this world for one original art so that's my my decision yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. um and then uh do you also design the calendars and other uh thing that you mentioned that you use your paintings for? Yes, I use Illustrator okay. to design, design the calendar and greeting card mm. and formatting them before I send it to a printing company. Okay. And do you uh, do you use any templates for this? I mean, and I'm not saying templates provided by someone else. Like, do you make your own templates and then use them uh, for yes. this? Okay. Yes, yes. Definitely. Hmm. Uh, it changes every year or slightly <laughs> when I don't like the font or, you know, hmm. the layout. So, and then how do you distribute this? How do you, how do you get it in the um, hands of people? I, I have my own website. Um, I sell them through there. 
also some of my um, products are in local gallery um, as a consignment. Um, and sometimes I go out to, you know, pop up market mm. on holiday season or, you know, mm. uh, other random <laughs> topics <laughs> so that I can really meet the audience. Mm. It's, mm. it's quite physically challenging, but really um, spiritually uplifting because you can talk to people yeah. who, who are interested in my art and, you know. Right. That energy is just yeah, so great. Um, and how do you market? Like, how do you let people know that you have made something new? Ah, uh, um, main marketing uh, channel will be social media. Okay. Instagram, Facebook. Um, I do. Uh, my husband always say, uh, take a picture of your process <laughs> for just documenting matter, but still, and also like um, I'll post the work in progress um, pic- pictures of my art and people can follow the journey of how yeah. it was, how it started and how it is done, you know, and I think that's quite fun. To have I share that with um, people, and also yeah, when I launch the new product, I'll, I'll you know so post that. Do you only post pictures or you also post videos? Oh, um, <laughs> I was exclusively uh, posting pictures because video. <laughs> it's just I was I'm. I'm not really good at <laughs> filming or I usually forget. Hmm. I just get into art and I'm having fun. And then I was like, oh, oh, I didn't take <laughs> any video or <laughs> photo. But photo, I can do it afterwards. After, then yeah. Video, you're, hey, I'm already done. So I'm and- trying to get better at it. And how do you post? Do you do you use any scheduling software or you just post whenever you have a picture to post? I do use scheduling um, <laughs> app because um, I don't really want to spend every day, yeah. like a few chunk of hours every day. Yeah. Uh, I'll spend bulk time like over the weekend or, you know, have layout, schedule it, and then put it on. Then the planner would do the rest of it. So, which which scheduling app do you use? I use Planoly. I just found it easy to use. Pla- it has Planoly, what? Planoly. It's P L A N O L Y. Planoly. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. It has some issues, um, like, uh. I don't know if, if it's changed, but um, sometimes it won't let me do um, bulk images or, or mm, mm. something something like that. So I have to do manually in that case. But I found it um, easy to use. And that was what uh, my friend uh, recommended me. But... I will say if there's any better, better <laughs> planner, <laughs> you know, I'm happy to try for the planner. And, um, and for this, do you have to, I know you schedule, I understand that, but then do you mm-hmm. have to um, enter information post by post in this in this page? Yes, yes. So, so you need to upload an image, you need to create text right. for that post you need to create hashtags and then you yeah. need to add a date and possibly time um, and then you do <laughs> that let's say for 10 posts in advance something like that mm-hmm. yeah so i i use uh, well i don't know if it's helpful but i use excel sheet okay <laughs> i have like a i made my own template like a calendar looking yeah and then i'll write down all the text and then have a have a name of image like I want to that I want to post and then like this day maybe this text this text so I have that and then 
Planoly, I would just copy and paste the text and then schedule everything. Um, and then in this Excel uh, spreadsheet, so that's a, that was going to be my another question. So that means your mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheet is not only helping you for the social media post, but it also helping you create like a catalog of your own creations. Am I correct? Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. I is, can see like um, in one view, like, right. oh, this Monday I, I posted this or I am planning to post this, then I should have the follow-up on this day or something like that, you know, so that I can really see the big picture. And, and I think, I, to me, spreadsheet is pretty yeah. helpful to see the big picture. How, how do you decide on the time that you want to post? Oh, or at time. Or time, time or day, like whatever it is. Like, how do you, right. how, how do you know when to post? Um, time is very tricky some say you know morning works some afternoon works um i i tend to switch it up um some more someday i will try morning someday i'll try afternoon and see what works and also plainly have this algorithm that suggests yeah. This time frame worked better than the other time frame. So maybe use the, this one, you know, and suggest me the time slot that's that gets more um, views or mm. clicks. So I was just, yeah, I was just going through Planoly when you mentioned it has this auto post feature. So this mm -hmm. auto post, is that only for the time or also for the date? Date too, date and time. Oh, so it can suggest you a date and time? Oh, the suggestion part, just the time. Just the time. Yeah, that's what I mm -hmm. thought. Like you still have mm -hmm. to mention the date. Okay. Yes. And yes. then, uh, so that, so then for the date part, like how do you know when to post? Like for the date, I'm saying, not the time. Um, it's it's my own just intuition. I'll okay. Say. okay. Um, I think like Friday, people are busy. Friday after five you know would people have time to look at social media <laughs> not really i would go out and have fun <laughs> for a weekend you know <laughs> so something like that yeah like friday in the in the lunch time maybe it'd be like ah oh, i want to see some posts <laughs> so so I, yeah tend to think about what what others will think or, but but then is, is this um like, do you schedule post based on when you finish your creations or they could be random and you don't, uh, you don't really, uh, I mean, could they be random? That's my question. Like, could they be completely mm -hmm. random or you have to post when you are finishing up a creation for that particular mm -hmm. creation? Uh, I don't particularly match uh, the arts um, final day. Yeah. in the social media okay um i'll well, when when there's events like um like exhibition that i'm mm. attending then that will have a specific date and then right. follow up um posts but art wise i'll randomly choose mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. okay great um what is the biggest challenge you face in your creation process <sighs> Biggest challenge will be, I'll say, um, getting out of my comfort zone. <laughs> That's mm. the biggest challenge. Um, even social media was a challenge for me. I'm per a personally very private person. Mm. So I don't really share <laughs> that much. <laughs> but um, I learned to share more and I, I like to put myself out there. Mm. But um, it's, I'll say it's blessing and a curse at the same time. Because I, I can get inspiration or see other art, artists, art, so many creative, you know, artists out there. So I'm loving, you know, browsing 
<laughs> but at the same time, I get like a, I compare myself. Am I mm. enough? Am I good enough? Yeah. Am I trendy enough? <laughs> you know? And then that can go down to a dark spiral. Yeah, I know. So I know. I'll say um, believing in yourself, even though you know you're. You just get inspiration, not going to the dark spot. <laughs> and then <laughs> believing yourself, believing in your creation, and keep on going will be, you know, so the key to the. To how do, how do you solve this? Challenge. Like, do you do you detox like yourself from social media for for some time and then just focus on your creation? How do you get uh, out there? It's a good question. Uh, sometimes I have to stop scrolling <laughs> I have to just stop <laughs> and then look at my art <laughs> and uh but uh, just i'll say have a walk <laughs> mm. for me have a walk just relax look at the nature <laughs> and get some new input then i'll yeah okay yeah. I mean, sometimes what I have found for myself is like my own creations in the past mm -hmm. help me uh, mm. like inspire. I mean, mm. they inspire me. So uh, it's not just like seeing other creations from other artists, but my own creations from past. Uh, I try true, to right. I try to make a record of it so that I can like just go go back and then look at them, and then they right. inspire me as well. Mm. Um, and another uh, thing that I wanted to ask was. Um, so do what is your vision for your own creations in future like do you with the tools and technology that you see around yourself um do you see yourself creating in a different manner in future um yes um so i want my art to warm people's heart or cheer them up, or um, I want to evoke their happy memory so that the art can be a centerpiece of, of, of conversation. So I want my art to be in every form, <laughs> not just on a wall, uh, like on dish or on fabric, or I don't know, bed sheet, cover, pillowcase. <laughs> so, um, in in that way, I I would totally I would definitely need the digital um, technology hmm. to put my art into uh, all sorts of different forms: hmm. like ceramic, fabric, paper, you know, you name it. Hmm. Hmm. So that art, uh, my vision is my art just is everywhere in people's life, and it's just comforting them or, or cheering yeah. them yeah great great discussion thanks a lot Munji for your time I really enjoyed talking with you oh thank you so much I had really I had fun yeah. <laughs> this thanks. was fun thanks for tuning in if you are a creator I would love to talk with you please connect with me through my website or social media see you in the next episode